Praise you, Jesus. Gloria started healing school <laughs> 38 years ago. Praise God. And has preached healing and prayed for the sick and laid hands on thousands oh, and you, thousands of people. And we've seen miracles of all kinds and signs and wonders you, and, and just, just good and wonderful things. Praise God. And it's not going to be any different That's in here right. today. That's right. Thank Amen. You. Thank you for healing. So it's very important that you pray in the spirit. It's very important that because see, we're, we're, we're all in this together. It's not us up here right. talking to you down there. No, 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 no. We're, we're a team together. Praise Gloria Jesus. and I are a preaching and ministry team and have been now for all these years. And you are part of this team today. And by the Spirit of God, you're believing God and the Spirit of God will bring things out of her Thank you, Lord. for you. Praise God. There's been times that I've said, I don't know why. How come me to get off on that? Somebody needed to hear that. That's right. Amen. Amen. Bless you, sweetheart. Thank you. Father, we thank you for yes, Lord. the healing grace Glory this morning. Glory to God. We receive, Lord. Oh, Heaven, thank you for it, Lord. Our healing in Jesus. We name. depend on you, greater one that's within thank us you, than he that's in the Praise world. Praise God. You are the one that does the work. <laughs> You're our comforter. Praise. You're our teacher. Thank you, Lord. You're our guide. You're our helper. You're our intercessor. Yes. You're our advocate. You're our counselor. You're our strengthener. And you're our standby. Yes. And you are our healer yes. this morning. Yes, we believe, Lord oh, Jesus. Oh, and we receive Your words healing power from is heaven. Upon every <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, blessed Praise be the name God. of the we Lord. For in the house this morning, saith the Lord, is a special work of grace. For I have determined and I have declared that this is a special day between heaven and earth. And my angels are in the room and the things that I've planned shall come to pass. If you will simply just expect we expect. Just expect, just, expect. just like a child expecting grandmother, expecting grandfather Praise to come today with just Glory. that kind of expectancy and we you'll see wonderful and here. mighty and glorious name, oh, things hallelujah. that will bring glory to the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We expect. <laughs> we Give expect. the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. We expect it. Bless glory, 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 Hallelujah. glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Barry. Praise the Lord. Healing time. There's a healer in the house. His name is Jesus. He's never missed healing school. Glory to God. And I've got a lot of witnesses around here to that effect. Jesus always comes to healing school. Father, we do love you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that Jesus himself bore our sicknesses, carried our diseases, and by his stripes we were healed. And so we receive our healing. It's a done deal. It's already been taken care of. Hallelujah. Jesus is the healer. And he's here. In Jesus' name we praise you, Lord. We thank you, Father for all the good that you do continually in our lives. Give us hearing, give us utterance. We believe for every person to be restored whole in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you agree with that? Yes. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. I want to go over some, of course, we go over God's medicine when, during healing school. We go over scriptures. We uh, never get all of them. There's so many healing scriptures. My goodness. But I, I haven't read this in a while, and it's always something I enjoy. This is about Brother uh, Justice Duplessis, David Duplessis' brother. 
It says, Justice Duplessis' father didn't believe in using doctors. He wanted him to call one or one so there would be no autopsy when the man died. The doctor wa uh, went ahead and gave him the birth certificate for his father when he was still alive. Don't do that to me. Church gathered round and prayed. He was at death's door. He broke into a sweat and was uphealed. <laughs> Glory to God. Ruined the funeral. He took a shower, then he milked the cows and walked to the doctor's office to take back the death certificate. Yay! Glory to God. Isn't that a great story? I heard him tell that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take the scripture, which is the medicine of God, God's medicine, and we're just going to feed on healing scriptures and uh, let our faith build up greater and greater. I know, I would guess 100% of the people in this room believe that Jesus heals today. Is that right? Yeah. Glory to God. We don't have any doubt about that. Ken and I are in our 70s. He's a little older than I am, but not much. You know, we're, uh, I'm 74 and he's 76 or 8. I don't know what he is. Anyway. <laughs> He's older than me. That's what's important. So, and, and uh, we, we still, we, neither one of us have any prescription drugs because we're not sick. We've been taking healing year, decade after decade after decade, and, and we're not sick, and we're not tired, and we're not weak. Glory to God, and to God be the glory. Amen. And that belongs to every one of us. Hallelujah. So you don't want to be slack in believing for God to renew your youth. Because you could stay here a long time and not have any energy, and that wouldn't be any fun. So we believe God, amen? amen. And we're going to look, in healing school, we, just, we go over healing scriptures and build our faith, and then we receive healing. So let's look at some scriptures. Let's start with Proverbs 4.20. It's a very... Uh, a very familiar scripture, but it, it, it says a lot about healing. Glory to God. Proverbs 4. I'm looking in the wrong spot here. 420. Now this one, if you could see my Bible, it's got writing all over the page. So I need a little help to read my writing. I can read the I can read the reading, but it's the writing that throws me off here. It says in 420, and here's the way you live healed. This is what we learned a long time ago. This is the way you live healed. It says, my son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. How do you do that now? Keep them in your eyes. You ought to spend some time in the Word every day, putting the Word in your eyes so that your heart stays full, full of the Word, full of faith. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they, the words of God, are life unto those that find them. That's life. That's, a, that's like a longer life, more life. Hallelujah. The words are life unto you and health to all their flesh. Isn't that an awesome scripture? That means there ought not be anything in your and my flesh, which is from the top of my head to the tip of my toes, that's unhealthy. It's not according to the word of God. He says that the words are life and health. So what do we do? We keep our heart in verse 23. We are to keep our heart with all diligence. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Now that word diligent means that you don't just say, well, you know, I haven't read the word this week, so I'm going to read a, a half a chapter or a whole chapter. No, you keep your heart with all diligence. How do you keep it? You keep it full of the word. It's the word in your heart that comes out your mouth that changes your life, changes your finances, changes your family, changes your health, hallelujah. 
the word in here coming out and being applied at the first sign of anything. And really, if you were very smart, if we were very smart, we would do healing scriptures when we feel great. Say, so, you know, you, you ought to have a number of healing scriptures in your heart just to bring forth all the time, every day, whenever you think about it, and certainly when you have a problem. Like, uh, you know, the best one that I know of is he bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases. Jesus himself bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. And by his stripes, we were healed. So we're already healed. It's already been done. Well, you say, well, yeah, but I don't, I have this thing. I have this arthritis. I heard, I, well, you've got to receive it. You have to take that healing. You have to receive it, don't you? I have it. I have it. And really you ought to, we ought to maintain a healing profile all the time. I never have said that before, but that's a good way to say it. We ought to maintain the healing profile. How do you do that? Put healing scriptures in your eyes, put it in your ears, say it out your mouth, take it into your heart, believe you receive it when you pray and just say, I'm healed. You know, you see all the advertise. You know, they have to advertise sickness and disease on TV. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Well, when you see that, see those things, say, "I am healed." Glory to God. I've already taken healing. I am healed. I'm never going to have that. I talk back to those things. Trying to sell me stuff when I'm healed. I am healed. I don't need that in Jesus' name. I'm in. Well, we learned to live, Ken and I learned to live that way many years ago. Now we are in the twilight zone in age. And uh, he's almost 80. I'm, I'm just right behind him about five years. And we have been well, strong, healed. When things have come up, which really has been pretty rare that we've even had to work at you know, fight the fight of faith over things. But some things have come up, pain here, there, or whatever. I had a pain in my side back here for a while. And I just put the word on it and put the word on it and put the word on it. I never have had this happen before or anything else. And so that pain moved over to this side. <laughs> so I put the word on it, put the word on it, put the word on it. And pretty soon that one was gone. Glory to God. I don't have any pain, hallelujah. And you know, we have, to, we have to do that with our money and our prosperity. We can't let the devil just come in and call us short and make us run short of money. Not when we've got the blessing. The blessing includes all the healing. It includes prosperity. It includes peace. In the blessing, you need to, you need to get really well acquainted with the blessing because that's yours. That just belongs to you if you're in Christ Jesus. If you're not in Christ Jesus, it doesn't belong to you. But why would you not want to be in Christ Jesus when that's where the blessing is? The blessing comes on us, hallelujah. The blessing comes on you, but it, it, won't, it just won't work. Faith doesn't work with an unbelieving mouth. Miracles don't happen to an unbelieving person. Somebody might pray for you and you get a healing, but you can't live on somebody else's faith. You might get a, you might get a help every once in a while because of that, because it's, uh, it's scriptural for believers to lay hands on the sick and they recover. But you can't depend, you shouldn't, let me just say, you shouldn't depend on other people's faith. It's your faith that's going to put you through. You are the most important person to you is you and your family. And uh, you just need to maintain a level of prosperity, of increase, of blessing, a level of healing. And don't expect to, you know, when you hear the news and this is happening bad financially and, the, and this is happening and there's going to be hard times coming. If you're a tither, if you're a sower, you ought to be prepared for hard times. You've already said it. You've already done it. You're still tithing. You're still sowing. 
That's the same way we do with healing. You ought to be prepared. You know, this plague could come out and it shouldn't bother you a bit. Why? Because I've already had my word shot. Hallelujah. (laughs) Glory to God. I take my word shot every day. I'm healed. Amen. And be bold about it. Be bold about it. Don't, don't just wait until you feel like you can't move to, be, uh, to, to release your faith for healing. So today, we, we talked about faith yesterday, and we're, we're going to talk about healing today and receive and take healing. So we're going to go over God's medicine, and we're just going to start. We're just going to do some of my favorite, uh, favorite scriptures. I like to say this, I I take my healing today. I let nothing stand in the way. Did you know the word salvation? You probably do. You're a well-taught group. Is deliverance, preservation, material and temporal deliverance, deliverance from danger and apprehension. It's pardon. It's restoration. It's healing, wholeness and soundness. All of those things, healing, wholeness, soundness, all of those other things I mentioned, that's included in the word salvation. Church, we've got it made. Jesus made it for us. He paid the price. He bore the whole curse in himself. He was made a curse for me. He was made a curse for you. How how do I mean that? I mean, he took the curse. He, He was perfect. He was the only one that qualified to take the curse, which is every sickness and every disease and every bad thing you can think about. If you you did a study of uh, Deuteronomy 28, you would see that the curse leaves nothing out. But then when you do a a study on the blessing, the blessing leaves nothing out. So I'm into the blessing syndrome, hallelujah. (laughs) I'm going with God. I'm going to obey him. You can't live free from sickness, disease, and poverty without the power of God. You say, well, there's a lot of rich people. Well, there's people with money, but are they free? Are they free from uh, sickness, disease? Are they free from worry, stress, and hate, and all of the bad things? We are free people. We've been made free. Glory to God. What set us free? The what? The truth has made you free. The truth set us free. When we found out what God's Word said, and when you found out what God's Word said, and you took it, those chains begin to fall off of you. The worst thing that Ken and I had before we uh, found out about the Word and how to live by faith was a lack of money. Has anybody ever suffered with that? It was no fun. We drove an old car. We lived in an old rent house. We, we, uh, we just, I had furniture Ken made shop in high school. Oh, mercy. <laughs> but you know what? I was grateful for it because it held up our little black and white TV. And that was, you know, a lot of years ago when everybody had black and white. Held up our little black and white TV. We put that little TV on there, even though the picture was only this high. (laughs) We had a TV. Hallelujah. Well, poverty's no fun. Sickness is no fun. Fear's no fun. Unbelief's no fun. But we, those of us who are in the body of Christ who have been born again into this body, we've been delivered from everything that's under the curse. Glory to God. And if you're here today and you say, well, I never have done that. Well, you're going backwards because life is in the Lord. It is a wonderful thing to wake up in the morning and and, and feel good and be free and be able to do the things you want to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's possible in the Word and in in, uh, going after the things of God. Now, here's a few things uh, that I wanted to discuss today. In in Psalm 145, and I'm going to go through uh, just some things. We won't look it up, but you could make a note of it. Psalm 145, it says, God is good to all. 
that means he's good to you and he's good to me. God's good to us. But sometimes when we, li- <clears throat> when we don't live, when we don't flow with God, we, f- we would be flowing against him and it's hard to have the good things that he wants to do for us like healing and prosperity, blessing of every kind, manifest in our lives when we're, he's going one direction, we're going in the other. So the value of the word to me is it tells me how to flow with God instead of against God. And when you flow with God, you're blessed. That was the requirement of the blessing in the Old Testament. They had to do what God said. They had to keep the commandments or the blessing didn't manifest. Isn't that right, Tracy? And so that's, what, that's still the way it is. If you, the more you walk with God and obey Him, the greater manifestation of increase, healing, peace, all the good things that God provides for us, the more you'll have in your life. Hallelujah. So the Psalm 145 says, God is good to all. Would that mean me? Yes. Would it mean you? Yes. God is good. We know what God, we know what good is. Good is being healed. Good is living in a good house. Good is having a car to drive that won't quit on you and it'll just keep going. It's a good car. Good is good. Hallelujah. It has no stench of poverty on it. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we used to have to pray and believe God in our old car. (laughs) I've told this before, but it's it's a pretty... uh, Amazing story when you think about it. We were going, when we first went, were in our endeavoring to go into the ministry, we were driving a, a, a secondhand car that we bought secondhand, an old, old Oldsmobile. And you've heard Ken tell it before, and I'm just going to verify to you that it is the truth. And we were, the kids were little and uh, hungry, and we were driving through Oklahoma City. I believe it was Oklahoma City, and there was a fence uh, across the two of uh, the four lanes. There was a fence in the middle of it, a big uh, uh, fence that you could, I forget now what, how to describe that, but anyway, a big fence. And you could see through that fence. And so, the, you know, we, it was in the day of the sizzler. How many of you remember the big, the big cow that, and restaurant out front, well, in front of the restaurant called the sizzler? Well, they had cheap food. How many of you remember that? And, and how many of you remember we were glad to get it too when we got in there? So anyway, we, we went by the Sizzler's big sign and that big bull and, and the kids started wanting to eat. And, and, uh, but, but we spent all of our money on gas. And so we, couldn't, we just didn't have the money. And so we were riding along this divided highway and Ken does this. He starts looking up. He said, I see something. So he took, a, he took a off on the side road. He got around and he came around. And see, we wanted some breakfast, but we didn't have any money. And so he looked, he, he found that spot where he saw that money. He saw some money fly across the road and hit the fence. So we went back and we came around. And, and uh, sure enough, there was a $20 bill stuck up on that fence just to buy us breakfast. God knows how to take care of us. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, some people might have seen that blow across and they'd have thought, well, that can't be money. That's not real money. And just keep going. But I'm telling you, when you expect a miracle, you get a miracle. <laughs> and you look for it and you recognize when it comes. Hallelujah. And uh, it's been a long time since we couldn't afford to eat at the Sizzler. I don't even know if they have the Sizzler anymore. But we were sure glad to eat there that day. Hallelujah. God can figure out a way to get you the money that you need. He can certainly figure a way to heal your body, to put it back like new. He's got parts. You can get new parts. Hallelujah. New liver, new hearts. Glory to God. He can do it. So God, in Psalm 145, it says, God is good to all. That's me. I'm an all. You're part of all. God is good to all. Isn't that a great scripture? And in uh, uh, 
We, we read, I think we read 420, but it's how we live. This is how you stay healed. My son, attend to Proverbs 420. Attend to my words. Pay attention to the word of God. If you don't pay attention to the word of God, you can have 50 Bibles in your house and they won't do you any good. You pay attention. You can go to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and you can go to some dead church where there is no word and you're not going to prosper there. But you get under the word and then you begin to hear what belongs to you. Faith comes and you begin to obey what he says, what the word says, and you begin to increase. You begin to prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almost all of you, I would guess, are already, you already know these things are true because you, you keep good company. Hallelujah. This says, my son, attend to my words. This is uh, uh, Proverbs 4.20. Incline your ear unto my sayings. So you give attention to, you do, I do, Ken does, all of us, if we're doing what we, if we're smart, we're giving attention to the word of God and what we see in that Word, and what we hear preached from the Word, we pay attention to, and we change when we see we're missing it. How many of you like to miss it? I don't see a single hand. I like to go right on with God and not miss anything that He's got for me. Because I know we've been walking with Him, living with Him for a long time. And I know that he doesn't have any bad ideas. He's only got good things, blessing things. And people, everybody could have it. People miss out on the blessing and they live a, a defeated life and a life of not enough and a life of sickness and sadness because they don't believe what the Word says. And they don't get born again, filled with the Holy Ghost so they can live abundantly and in victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, the Bible says, even our faith. Where do you get faith? Only from the Word of God. That's where faith comes from. Amen? Amen. So I believe that you wouldn't be in this company unless you know the things I'm telling you. But it's always good to just kind of refurbish your, your energy toward the things of God. And not to get lazy because maybe now you, you, you know you got a good house, you got a good car, and, and you know you're not hungry. No, you can't quit just because of that. First thing you know, that good house and good car will be gone and you'll be hungry. We live by faith. We don't just live by faith part of the time, do we? No, we live by the Word of God. We believe, we spend time, we put the Word in our, I'm talking about you and me. We all spend time in the Word. We put the, we attend to it, like Proverbs 4 says. We put it in our eyes. We put it in our ears. We go to a good church who preaches the Word. Well, you know, I don't have a good church. There's a good church that preaches the Word, but it's an old building and it's not new. And over across town, there's a new building. They, they don't really preach the Word, but it's nice over there. That ain't going to cut it, children. You go where the Word is preached and support that church. Believe God over there and it'll, it'll turn out to be a new church. You get you a new church. Not a different church, but new buildings and things. But we, so we don't ever, not any of us, I'm talking about you, me, Ken, all, we never, ever get to quit the Word of God. We're always doing what Proverbs says, attending to it. We attend to the Word every day. Every day. We spend some time in the Word of God. And what, what we do is we take that Word and we believe it. And we let it into our hearts and into our mouth. And, and, and we, stay, we stay good. We stay healed. We stay prosperous. And we're, we, you know, when you're in the kingdom of God and you're operating in the kingdom of God, you don't have to go through the ups and downs that the world goes through. The kingdom's the same all the time. And where is the kingdom? The kingdom's within us. 
So we're, we're protected if we're walking. I'm talking about you and me. We're protected if we're walking in the will of God, obeying God, doing what He tells us to do, spending time in the Word so that our faith stays strong. We stay strong. Amen? Amen. I am so grateful. I remember when Ken and I used to have to pray to, to do anything. I mean, we just had to believe God to... to uh, uh, ha ha we had to believe God to buy an old car. And we were glad to get an old car because that's a far better than walking. Yeah. And we had a black and white TV, had a picture that high. We didn't, have, we didn't have the money to get it fixed. This was many, many years ago. And that black and white TV sat on this table that Kenneth made in high school shop. And in that bedroom, we had that, that wrought iron table. We had that inch high TV and we had a rollaway bed that we didn't own. We rented a rollaway bed. Now that's the pits. <laughs> Poverty is just no fun. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But you know what? We went to Tulsa and uh, Ken went up there because uh, he, he started flying for Brother Roberts. So we lived in Tulsa and in that same town as God would have it. Brother Hagen lived on the other side of town. And we'd heard about him because his kin's mother and dad knew all those people. And, uh, and so we knew that, that that was a good thing, you know. And during that time that we lived in Tulsa, we weren't there very long, Brother Hagen started having uh, every, I believe it was every month, he'd have a week or 10 day meeting over at his place. And that was like our our college, I mean, that was our school. A kid was going to ORU, but then we'd go to Brother Hagen's meeting and learn how to live by faith. Glory to God. In fact, this is a terrible thing. I'm ashamed of it, but it happened. <laughs> we went to Brother Hagen's meeting. Kelly was probably about three or four, and John maybe was two years old. Well, Brother Hagen, you know, he was trying to be nice to the people, and he he picked John up. John just slapped the way out of him. <laughs> we could, I'm telling you, it's a wonder that boy lived through that. Oh my goodness, were we humiliated. But we got over it. The Lord helped us, hallelujah. So Proverbs, in Proverbs, uh, but we were certainly undone about it. Proverbs four, here's the way we live. This is the way we stay strong. We pay attention to the words of God. We incline our ear unto what he says. We listen. You know, there used to be an advertisement or something about when E.F. Hutton speaks, people listen. But we listen when God speaks. When we, what we see in the word, we, we listen. If we're not doing what it says there, we make a change. Now we've done that for a lot of years. And uh, we've, we've been blessed through all the, all the years. The cycles come and go, you know, in, in the nation and in finances. But we've given sowers, tithers, and obeyers of the Word of God. And God's taken care of us. And, and you, most of you have done that same thing. And I'm grateful. But what we did was, Proverbs, we kept doing was paying attention to the Word of God. The... Uh, my son, attend, this is Proverbs 20, uh, 4.20. My son, attend to my words. Give attention to God's words. Every place you give attention to God's word and you make changes to agree with that, you increase. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You find blessing. You find increase. Let them not depart from your eyes. Now that says to me, we need to spend time in the Word. You say, well, I've read the Bible through three or four times. Well, did you do it today three or four times? No, we have to keep our Word. We have to keep our eyes on that Word to keep ourselves walking the straight line of obedience. And that's where blessing is. And words. You have to keep your words in line with God's Word. Ken and I don't talk unbelief. We don't talk doubt. We, we don't uh, just speak right in front of people. We speak right to each other. We speak what God's Word says. 
And we talk back. I talk back to the television. If I'm watching television and it begins to talk about bad times and this problem and, and this epidemic and all that, I'll say, I'll never have that. Or if it's, you know, the finances are tightening up and whatever it is, I I just say, my God meets my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, according to his riches. Our financial increase and blessing comes from another source. It's not the U.S. government. It's not the Republicans or the Democrats. It's from heaven, hallelujah. We're blessed. Heaven doesn't have any bad economy. They don't have depressions. They got so much up there, they make streets out of gold. (laughs) Glory to God. What a place to live. I'm going to go there one of these days. And what's more, I'm going to have a big mansion. And if you don't like mansions, you don't want to go to heaven. (laughs) Man, some people get mad if you have a big house, you know. Well, let them get mad. I like a big house. Glory to God. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we are blessed people. I mean, the whole, just most of the world, when you look at the whole world and all the different people in the world, most of the world don't have their needs met spiritually, physically, or financially. But when you're in God and in in the Word of God, your needs are met. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's, we're just in an awesome place, church, that the Word works all the time. Why? Because we attend, we pay attention. I've got here in my, uh, I have a wide margin Bible and I got lots of notes here. My son, attend to my words, incline your ear unto my sayings. That's the law of receiving. The law of receiving is attention. Pay attention to the Word. If you want it to work for you, you got to do what it says. You got to find out what it says. You got to spend time in it and then do that. My son, attend to my words. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they, the words, are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. You can live prosperous on the Word. You can live well on the Word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Ken and I are in our 70s. He's a little older than I am, but he's not much older. I'm 70. I can hardly remember how old I am, but I'm 74, and I think, can I be 74? How could I be 74? And then he's he's five years older than I am. So we have... uh, paid attention to the Word. We kept it in our eyes, in our ears, in our circumstances. We keep the Word of God in our circumstances by saying what we want to come to pass according to what the Word says belongs to us. And, uh, and it says that they, the words, now you know all these scriptures, but you, you got to get them fresh in your thinking again. They are, the words are health, or medicine, I believe the margin says, medicine to all their flesh. So you are, if you're taking the word, you're already taking good medicine. Amen. And that medicine is good for all your flesh. Amen. And you just have to fill this one prescription. Keep the word in your eyes, in your ears, and obey it. You don't have to run to the drugstore for a refill. You go to the Bible for a refill. Amen? Glory to God. And you live well and you live strong. You say, well, somebody said if I keep sick, if I keep getting healed, how am I ever going to die? You don't have to worry about that. That's not a factor. You don't even have to be sick to die. What do you have to do to die? You, the spirit man, you have to leave your body. That's what will happen to us in the rapture. You have to leave your body, be caught up, and to be absent from the bodies to be where? Present with the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Church, we've got it made. If we'll just do things the way God says, we, we, just, we have an answer to every situation. Amen. But now we'll have to be diligent. It, you know, 
Uh, these things don't happen to people that aren't diligent about the Word of God and about doing the Word. We have to do what He says if we want the blessing. That's the way it always was. In the Old Testament, there was the blessing and there was the curse. And they had to pick which one they wanted to live out. Do I want to do what God says and be blessed? Or do I want to do what everybody else is doing and saying and acting and, and just be lazy and, and what happened? Be under the curse. Well, I prefer the blessing. I've been under the curse for a while in my, our younger days till we found out better. But I've been under the blessing for you decades. Blessing better. Glory to God. It's better to have an abundance than to have lack. It's better to be healed than to be sick. It's better to love your wife or your husband than to be sorry you ever married the character. It's better. It's just better to walk in love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. My son, give attention to the word. Incline your ears. And I've got in my margin here that this is the law of receiving. If you want to keep receiving, this is the way you do it. You give attention to the word. You make your ear listen to what God's saying. You don't let it depart from your eyes. You keep the word in the midst of your heart. You act on it. Verse 22 says, For they, the words, are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Uh, and in the uh, Bullinger says that word there is, is medicine. Medicine to all their flesh. Now that's the medicine Ken and I take. We take medicine. I don't have anything against taking medicine, but I'm not going to take it when I'm well. I'm not going to take it when I can have the Word of God be my medicine. <laughs> Glory to God. And not even have to go through all that. Health to all their flesh. What's left out there? Nothing. Health, or the margin says, medicine to all their flesh. You can live well and you can live good on the Word of God if you'll just do what it says. If you'll obey it, you got to spend time in it to find out what to do. You, and you know now, back there, back when we started, there weren't many really good churches. They, the term word church hadn't been made yet. And now there's good churches where people can get in church and learn more quickly than what we did. There weren't any word churches back there. There might have been good churches with good people, but they weren't telling you how to live by faith and how to be healed and to stay healed and how to prosper. They'd run you out of town on a rail if you talk about prosperity at church. <laughs> but yet, you know, you were supposed to tithe. Well, if you tithe, you're going to get the blessing of the tither if you receive it. Glory to God. I like to prosper. Yeah. Hallelujah. I like to be healed. I like to wake up in the morning and not hurt. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we, that belongs to us. They, the words, are life unto those that find them. And God, get this, health to all their flesh. God's Word is health to all their flesh. There's nothing wrong with you taking medicine, but it's a poor second to health to all your flesh. And you, you know, you, you start, uh, if, if you're on medicine, whatever, that's not a problem. But get on that Word and begin to believe God for your healing, for your well-being. Study the scriptures. Most of you out there in this audience are far ahead of most Christians, but uh, we all, all of us can ramp it up. We can all increase what we're doing, praying, believing God, saying, what are you saying? I'm telling you the word is true. You get what you say. That we learned that and we started changing what we said. We quit saying we don't have, what are we going to do? Uh, you know, this is not working or whatever. We begin to speak what God says over our lives. And the more you do that, the more you open the door for the blessing. Amen. And I don't think we have to, uh, I don't think we lose the blessing just because we get older. I think we ought to stay well, stay strong, stay prosperous. Glory to God. 
Ken's in his, he's in his late 70s. And I'm in my mid 70s. You know, I don't even have any prescription drugs. Why don't I have any? Because I'm not sick. I'm healed. Kid doesn't have any. We've got strength and energy and the blessing working. Pay attention to the blessing. Get, get uh, videos and CDs and, and if, you, if you're not really familiar with it, get familiar with it. Uh, it it's an awesome thing that's already been given to us as to, and to you as children of God. Glory to God. I'll just read you some things here in my margin if I can read my writing. It says long life. What is long life? Well, Genesis 6, 3 says 120. Well, I'm not even close to that yet. 120 is long life. What does the scripture say? With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's available to the man or woman, boy or girl, who does what God says in his life. You have to spend time in the Word, get in a good church, find out what he says, and then do it. I have hear my son and receive my sayings, and the years of your life shall be many. Glory to God. Long life. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. This is in Proverbs 4. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom and I have led thee in right paths. When you pay attention, you get led. And you get led the right path. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a good thing. I mean, God's got it put together for us. Uh, When you go, your steps shall not be straightened or, or bound up. And when you run, you shall not stumble. Here's the key. Take fast hold, verse 13. Take fast hold of instruction and let her not go. Let not instruction or revelation go. Keep her and for she is your life. Knowing what the word says and doing it, as most of you already know, is the key to long life and to life worth living. I know a lot of people don't even want to live anymore because they're, they're not happy and things aren't good and they're sick and they hurt. Take, well, I don't know a lot of them, but I know there are a lot of them. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her for she is your life. Revelation, understanding, knowing what the word says, letting it change your thinking. We don't ever arrive at knowing all there is to know. I can tell you that right now. And so, and we let things slip if we don't spend time in the Word. So we spend time in the Word. We, we let it talk to us. We let it straighten us out. It might just be some minor thing that seems like a minor thing. And you read a scripture that you find out that minor thing is not in agreement with what God says. Well, what do you do? Actually, there's, it's just minor to you. There's nothing minor about being disobedient in any way. So what do we do? Well, we change. We make a change. If we find out we need to talk right and say right, we change what we say. We change to agree with the Word of God. And if we say things that are unbelief and doubt and we realize it, we correct ourselves. We say, I I, I rebuke that. That's not right. I, I repent for saying that. I repent that came out of my mouth. I believe. This is what I believe. And then you speak the word. So what do you have to do? Well, you have to know the word in order to do that. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not to the way of evil. Man, that would save people. I bet you can think of a lot of people that would have saved them a lot of time and effort. Don't go in those drug places for the people, young people. Don't go where they're doing drugs. That's the path, the wrong path. Don't go in places... uh, don't go to a church that teaches you that healing's passed away. Man, they're not even close to prosperity. They're still working on healing. And most likely they don't even know about salvation, how to be born again. Yeah, but it's a pretty church. It's downtown. It's, the, it's just so quiet and just so wonderful in there. Get over it. Get in a church that's not so quiet and wonderful, but preaches you the word, amen? And, and be strong and grow up and have your needs met. 
For uh, avoid, let's see, enter not in the path of the wicked and go not into the way of evil. Avoid it, pass by it, don't turn in there pass, uh, and pass away, pass away from it. For they sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause someone to fall. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just, that's us, if we're walking with God. But the path of the just is as the shining light. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is darkness, is this darkness. And they don't know at what they stumble. So here's the cure for everybody. My son, attend to my words. That's the law of receiving. Attention is the law of receiving. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Make your ear listen to the word of God. I mean, you know, you can go to church, the preacher be preaching something that's absolutely scriptural that you know is right, but it's something you don't want to do. Don't pass it up. Make your ear listen. Make a change. Glory to God. Attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Let me tell you this. When in uh, 1967, I guess about that time, was when we moved to Tulsa. And Ken uh, was going to, uh, he started at a 30-year-old freshman at ORU. Well, at that same time, Brother Hagen was having seminars, 10-day seminars. And so, you know, we, he went to ORU, but we, all, we went to all of the meetings at Brother Hagen's. And, and we be, that's where we learned. Just, I mean, while we were there, the Lord had us some food. And we went over there. We did the ice up in Tulsa. And, you know, the roads were bad, but we wouldn't miss a meeting. We would slip and slide all the way over to Utica Street where Brother Hagin's meetings were. Hallelujah. And God set us up so that we got, uh, we got to get in those meetings. Now, listen to this. If you don't know it, it's good news. Now, Brother Hagin's, all of his, I think all, but certainly most all of his teaching and seminars and things that we got in when back in 1967 by going on icy roads or whatever else we had to do. You can get it on your telephone. <laughs> what a deal. Now, if you don't learn something, it is not God's fault. <laughs> Ken's got his, he's got Brother Hag all of Brother Hagen's stuff. He had it downloaded on his, his iPhone, his telephone. So he, he goes around listening to that preaching all the time. And boy, is it good. I mean, it's just like it was in the old days when we first began to hear it. It just sets you free. And what a tool. It's even free. You can go on there and get all of those things that Brother Hagin taught. Now he, to me, I mean, for Kid and me, we learn more from Brother Hagin than any, we learn how to live by faith from him. And that changed everything. We learned how to be healed from him. We learned that it works in money and finances from him. And we didn't miss those meetings while we lived there. We would slip and slide if the weather was bad. But now you can go to your telephone. <laughs> Brother Hagin's been in heaven a long time now. I'm sure he's having great meetings up there. <laughs> I bet he knows that he's People are listening on the phone, though. <laughs> Isn't that amazing what we can do? You can hear all those seminars, one right after, one day, right, one meeting day right after another that uh, we, we listened to when we were in Tulsa. We were there for about six months, and we went to everything he did, and we kept up with him after we left because, man, we found something that works. It got us out of debt. It got us healed. It got us in, in the will of God, just doing what he was teaching from the word of God. Glory to God. So take advantage of that. People think you're a telephone freak, <laughs> but you'll be a free telephone freak. freak. That was almost a tongue twister. 
So, so it's the word. It's the word, church. You got to find out what's in the word. As you know, this is a good group here. You know, and, and there's not any substitute, no other way to get free and stay. That I found, if you find one, you tell me. I, we've never found another way than the word of God going in our eyes and our ears, doing, obeying what we hear there and doing it. And it works. It works. It works in finances. It works in healing. It works in your family. Most of you here, you wouldn't be in this meeting, this atmosphere, and these preachers, unless you already believe that. But still, you know, we can get busy and, and let it go, and we don't spend time listening like we ought to and spend time in the Word. Y'all spend time in the Word every day. Talk to God every day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Get in prayer every day. Amen, Tracy? And things will begin to turn around. I'm telling you, I've been at it. Ken, I've been at it a long time. Somebody said this. I think it was Norval Hayes. And it's absolutely the truth. He said, God don't bless lazy Christians. That's the truth. It is so. God don't bless lazy Christians. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to be one. How about you? Because I like the blessing. Man, I lived under the curse and I've lived under the blessing. Blessing better by far. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Let's just finish this and uh, we'll uh, call it a day. Enter not, or whoever preaches after me, I don't know. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil. That's a good advice. I'll keep you out of trouble. Avoid it and, turn, and pass not by it evil, talking about, turn away from it and pass away. For they, the evil, sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause someone to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence, or wickedness is the word for lawlessness. But the path of the just, this is where you and I walk. The path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The path of the just is like the shining light that shineth more and more on your path through the day. Hallelujah. The wicked and the opposite of that is the way of the wicked is darkness. And they know not at what they stumble. Here's the cure. Verse 20, which is a scripture we all know. My son... Attend to my words. The key to abundant life, to health, to prosperity, to peace, to all the good things that people want is right here. Attend to my words. Pay attention to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. You do not get free from the word of God without some effort. The word's not going to chase you down enough for you to live by it unless you go after it. It's available, but people ignore it and they go do other things and they don't depend on it. If you're not depending on the Word, you're not putting faith in it. So this scripture right here, it's the law of receiving. The law of receiving is your attention. What are you paying attention to? What are you listening to? What is... It, what is uh, creating in your heart and in your soul the things that you think. If you feed on the world's trash, and it is mostly trash, if you feed on that and you don't feed on the Word, you're not going to have any power in your life. You're not going to have any wisdom. You're not going to know what to do when the crisis comes. And crisis comes. But if we stay in the Word and we let that Word not depart from our eyes, spend time in it every day and do what it says when we see it, we can live free in a crazy world. We can be blessed in a world that's having money problems or healing problems. Glory to God. The Word is life and health to all your flesh, the Bible says. You want to stay well? Go to the Word. You want to prosper? Stay in the Word. Obey it and do it. In Jesus' name. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. How do you do that? Keep them going in your eyes and in your ears and it stays in your heart. 
they are life to those that find them. Health, healing, or healing. Bullinger says that word means healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart. Now here's the bottom line. And this is why this word right here is so powerful and strong and demanding. Keep your heart with all diligence. The cross reference says, with all that you, above all that you guard. Above all, keep your heart. Your heart is the most important part of your body that's in your body. Not your, well, this heart right here is pretty important, all right? If it caught you, your ticker quits, you've had it. But your spirit man will keep your ticker ticking. Hallelujah. Your spirit man will keep your mind straight. Your spirit man fed with the word of God and obeying the word of God will keep what working? The blessing. The blessing was always for the obedient. In the Garden of Eden, they were blessed as long as they were obedient. But when they quit being obedient, the curse came. And it's still, uh, it's still like that in today's society. If we'll do what God says and we'll learn how to speak words right, and believe right and speak words right according to what God's Word says, we can live free in this crazy mixed up world. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. But if you don't put any effort into putting the Word in, there's not going to be Word to come out and fix things when you need it. Hallelujah. So what we need to do is to keep our heart in verse 23... The, since the words are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh, keep your heart with all diligence. This is great advice. For out of it, out of your heart are the issues of life. How we keep our heart is the most important thing in our life. If you want to live well, if you want to live prosperous, if you want to be safe, Keep your angels working for you. Glory to God. Do everything you know to do to find out what the Word says and then do what it says. And you can live free. You can live on top. You can be on the top and not the bottom. Glory to God. So I see what, why the Word would say to do that. Keep your heart, in other words, full of the Word, with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart as the great citadel, for out of it are the, is the source of and outgoings of life. Proverbs 4.30 says, uh, or maybe it's 14.30. It said, I'm reading my own writing, it's not easy. Calm and undisturbed mind and composure are life and health. So I just, I'll just throw this in as I close. If you're disturbed, if you're upset, if you're nervous, if you're, you know, you just can't seem to get it together, you need to do something. You need to get under the teaching of the Word, get in a good church, read your own Bible and do what it says. Keep, you need to do this. Keep your heart, we all need to do this. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it, are the issues of life. This, this spirit, that's not my ticker here, although it's important, but it, that's your spirit. Keep your spirit full of the Word of God and it'll talk to you. It'll correct you. It'll change things. It'll cause your faith to rise up and take victory when maybe the world says there's no victory for you. There's no cure for this disease, this or that or the other. No, uh-uh. In the world, you have tribulation. But we're not of the world. We're of God. And we do what He says. And we feed on what He says. We believe and say what He says. And we're free. What makes us free? The truth. Where do you get the truth? The Word. Where else? That's it. The Word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise God. <clears throat> I have a, a, uh, a young preacher here that's just getting started and, and I want to give him a hand up today. Now then, 
Let's, uh, oh. let's go over to the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Okay. Thank you, Keith. Thank you very much. Verse 4. We're going to do here now what, what Gloria has read from the book of Proverbs. We're going to put our eyes on this, incline our ear to it. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Now the word translated griefs and sorrows is sickness, disease, weakness, and pain. Now we know that because in Matthew 8, 17, hold your place there and turn back and put your eyes on this. Let the, let the scripture uh, translate itself. And the eighth chapter in the 17th verse, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, himself took our infirmities yes, and bare our sicknesses. Amen. So let's go back over there now. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes or bruises, we are healed. Praise God. Now then, thank you, Father. Let's go to the 28th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28. You've heard us quote that in, in the 30th chapter, the 19th verse. <clears throat> Let, let's put our eyes on that first because you've heard us quote these things, but it, it, we need to be putting them yeah, that's right. in our eyes. My son, incline your ear, attend to my words, Incline your ear unto my sayings. Keep them. Yeah. Don't let them depart from your eyes. So they need to be going in your ears, in your eyes, in your heart, coming out your mouth. Now notice this. I call in 19th verse, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life. Or well, the understood subject is you. You choose life that both you and your seed yes. may live. Yes. So it's not God's choice, it's ours. Yes, sir. Amen. That you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, well, to, to obey his voice, you got to hear his voice. So that means, see, he's, he's already made his choice. He's already chosen you and me. And now the choice is ours. He has chosen to make himself available to love you and for you to love him. He has chosen to speak to you that you may cleave to him for he is your life and he is your length of days. Now, Gloria referred to Genesis 6, 3. Well, <laughs> hold your place there and let's turn over to the book of Genesis chapter 6. Because all length of days scriptures are based on this declaration that God has made. Verse 3 the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Now the new living says, his normal lifespan 
shall be 120 years. That's just normal. That's normal. That, yeah. That's his normal lifespan. Well, Brother Copeland, I, I, I thought God had given us three score and 10 or four score. In other words, uh, reason of strength. 70 or 80. No, that never has been God's right. plan. That came on a disobedient people out in the desert. And he said, your bones are going to fall in this desert. Now, you know why he said that? Because they kept saying, we're going to die in this desert. We're going to die in this desert. We're going to die in this desert. He brought us out here to kill us. We're going to die in this desert. He said, what I have heard come into my ears is going to happen to you. So they were going to die in that desert. Nobody's getting out of there. Over 20 years old. Amen. And there is, if you have an amplified translation of the Bible, under the 90th Psalm, there is a footnote to that, and we'll give you all of the, the yeah. scriptures that have to do with it, like 14 yeah, chapter I meant numbers to read and, that today. I'm glad and, you're and so forth. And, uh, but now, all of these long life scriptures are based on that 120 statement. So now, and that's just as much the word of God as by his stripes you were healed. So now 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. And I want you to notice how this is translated in verse one. It shall come to pass if you will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, the Lord thy God will set thee high above all nations of the earth. Now notice this. And all these blessings Hallelujah. shall come on you and overtake you. It shall be that way. Yeah, because see, he, he had released the blessing. He didn't have to stop and come to each individual one and put a blessing on them because the blessing is there. And when you're walking in his word, the blessing is being manifest. Now go to the 15th verse. But it shall come to pass if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and statutes, which I command thee this day, all these curses shall come on you and overtake you. Now, I want to stop and talk to you about this just for a moment before we, before we pray and, and, and believe God and exercise these things. The curse came on the earth when Adam separated from God. It came out of Adam. Now, God did not have to curse anyone. All you had to do was get out of his word and the curse was there. Why? Because the devil stand there waiting on you. Yeah. Yeah. Now we in the New Testament, oh yes, we have the law, but it's the law of love. <laughs> Amen. And in the old covenant, he said, if, if, if you, you, I, I'll keep sickness and disease. I'll take it from the midst of you if you, if you do what I tell you to do. Now, when we're That's walking right. in love, Jesus said, the way is very narrow, That's right. but broad is the way to destruction. What's he talking about? He's talking about, let's say there's a line drawn between Gloria and me here, and it's that love line. 1 John 5, 18, he, 1 John is the love book, you understand? Perfected love casteth out fear. Amen. Amen. 
Now he, in, in 518, he said, he that's born of God sinneth not, for he keeps himself yes. and that wicked one touches that's him right. not. Amen. Now, you remember right there in the fourth chapter of first John, he said, God is love. He that is born of love sinneth not. Amen. 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 And that wicked one touches him not. He keeps himself. How? In love. So I'm walking this, line, this love walk, this love line in the name of Jesus. And Satan tries to put something on me. I said, no, no, no. No, you ain't doing that. You can't put that on me, devil. That's in the name of Jesus. No, no. I walk in love and I live by faith in Jesus' name. You can't put that on me and you know you can't put that on me. But now if you don't know you have that kind of authority, he'll strap it on you and, and make you think God did it. And he'll refer to these scriptures right here that said God smote them. Well, see, you didn't have to come smite anybody. No. Look how, let me, let me show you again. And these curses will come on you and overtake you. He smote it himself. Yeah. Well, he, he, he caused it. Yeah. Because he got out of the word. So I'm walking this, I'm walking this, this love walk. And some, then, then I get irritated to somebody. And, <laughs> Whoa, forgive me, Lord. Whoa, put my armor back on. Keep myself on this line here. Yes. See, the devil is out here. Love never fails. I get off of that, he, he's going to take a swing at me. I mean, repent, repent right yeah. now. Yeah, Forgive yeah. all the time. Yeah. Don't wait till somebody's rude to you to start forgiving. I mean, if there's something that you've got problems forgiving, I mean, dump them right now. Forgiveness is not an act of feeling. It's an act of obedience. We have been given a command to love one another. Amen. <laughs> it's not a suggestion for pretty Christmas cards. No, no. It's the law. Forgive if you have all against any. That your heavenly Father forgive you your trespass. Amen. See, if you're in unforgiveness, you're not in a position to receive forgiveness. You have to walk in the light that you have. So we're walking this love line. And in the name of Jesus, that wicked one touches us That's not. Right. Praise God. Glory that means God. don't get sick and get healed. Stay well. That's right. That's right. That's divine Praise help. God. Praise God. All right. Now then, I want you to look, and there's all the, the sicknesses and diseases listed here and poverty and debt and so forth, all under the curse. Yeah. Let's look at verse 61, Deuteronomy 28, 61. Also, every sickness, say every sickness. Every sickness. Every plague, every plague, which is not written in this book of the law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until you be destroyed. Well, actually, see, here it is again. He didn't have to bring it on you. He's all, it already said so. There is an English Hebrew translation problem there. And we, we could go into that, but it, it, it'd take a while. So, but, uh, we, but because it was cr translated correctly in verse 15 and also verse two, then, then we follow that. You can see that God didn't put it on anybody, but he has to allow it when you get out of his word. That's right. All you have to do is just, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins when we confess them. Actually, you allow it when you oh, get yeah. out of the word. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. You brought it on yourself. Mm -hmm. But the devil sure would like to blame God for it. And preachers have been blaming him for it for hundreds and hundreds of years. 
It never was true to start with. Now then, thank you, Lord. Let, let's go back to Isaiah 53 once more. Verse seven or six, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned to everyone to his own way. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He oh is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. Now then, let's go if to. If he'd have opened his mouth, we'd all be toast. Oh yeah, I yeah. Mean, he had to over. keep his mouth shut because yep. if he'd opened his mouth, he'd have been delivered. Let's go to Exodus, chapter twenty-three. Verse 20, behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way, to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression for my name is in him. But if you shall indeed obey his voice and do what I speak, then I will be an enemy unto your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. Ooh, that's a great scripture, isn't it? Now then, verse 25. You have to read those verses to fully understand verse 25. It's been, people have pulled it out of that context and used it and, and it, 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 it's, you read it incorrectly. You shall serve the Lord your God and he, your angel, shall bless your bread and water and I will take sickness from the midst of you. Amen. Now Hebrews chapter 1 God, who at sundry times and in different manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. May I remind you that the scripture says in, in Romans chapter 8, we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Healing belongs to you and me. That's right. We are joint heirs with Jesus. The very deliverance Jesus received when God raised him from the dead belongs to us. We have been raised from the dead of right. our, in, in our sins and trespasses and raised up together with him and made to sit together with him in heavenly places. Praise, Praise God. God. Glory to God. Thank now you. then, Verse four, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father and he will be to me a son. Now these are the words that God used to raise Jesus from the dead. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten, talking about Jesus, into the world, he said, let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he said, who makes his angels spirits and his, and his ministers a flame of fire. But under the sun, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness, hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above his fellows. 
Mm. or your fellows. Thou Lord in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens of the works of your hand. They shall perish, but you remain and they shall wax old as does a garment and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up and they shall be changed, but you're the same and your years will not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Are they not all? Are they not all? Not one angel. He said, I will send you an angel. In the old covenant, when Satan had authority in the earth that he stole off Adam, the angels of God were not in the earth. They had to leave. Jacob's ladder, angels going to and fro on special assignments. Jacob's ladder no longer exists. You missed a chance to shout. Because on the day of Pentecost, Jesus had said, all authority has been given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit and all the angels were sent forth. They were created to be here. They were created to serve man. That's what God created them to do and to be. Praise God. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth on the day of Pentecost <laughs> to minister? Notice. Not to them, to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. This room Hallelujah. is filled with angels. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Every demon spirit of sickness and disease, we take authority over you now. Leave this place. Take your sickness and get out of here now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jump to your feet. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Raise both hands. Beautiful. Shout this. Sickness, disease, weakness, and pain. Sickness, disease, weakness, and pain. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. Get out of my life. Get out of my life. Take your hands off me. Take your hands off me. I am God's property. I am God's property. I belong to Jesus. And you can't touch me. I am a citizen of heaven. Who do you think you are putting your hands on me? I plead the blood. I announce the name. That's above every name that's named. I'm not the sick. Trying to, get trying to get healed. I am the heal. I am the heal. And the devil's been trying to steal my health. And the devil's been trying to steal my health. Well, you can't have it. You can't have it. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I am healed. I am healed. I am strong. I am strong. I am delivered. I am delivered. I am prosperous. I am I'm supposed to be well. I'm supposed to be well. I'm supposed to be thoroughly furnished. I'm supposed to be thoroughly furnished. I have his name. I have his word. I have his word. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Than he that's in the world. Trying to 
make me sick. Trying to take my life. Trying to take my life. I rebuke you, cancer. I rebuke you, cancer. I rebuke you, blood disease. I rebuke you, foul arthritis. Take your hands off God's property. I rebuke you, lung disease. I rebuke you, ear disease. I rebuke you ringing in ears. I rebuke you ringing in ears. I rebuke you migraine headaches. I rebuke you migraine headaches. I rebuke you eye disease. I rebuke you eye disease. I rebuke you sinus trouble. I rebuke you sinus trouble. I rebuke you now. I curse you foul sickness and disease. Leave. Leave. Go. Go. Ministering spirits. Spirit. Help. Help. Do your job. Do your job. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. My angel always works with me. said, blessed be the name Bless of the Lord God. God. Hallelujah. 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 Woo, glory. Glory. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Oh, glory, 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 glory. With long life, he satisfies me. Shout it. With long life, he satisfies me. I take it. I take it. I have it. I have it. It's mine. It's mine. And, I'll and I'll not let it go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Were you watching were you watching Gloria and Pastor George when they taught on bulldog faith? You know what bulldog faith is? A bulldog, this, this, is, this, is, this is actually true about a bulldog. They will lock their jaws and won't let go. That's one of their characteristics. And <laughs> they, in some cases, you just have to kill one of them to get him turned loose. Like a dog on a bone. Dear God, this healing belongs to me. It's not something I'm trying to get. I've had it all these years. I'm just now finding out about it. Thank you, Lord. We went over to Bob Nichols when his church was at the little post office church mm -hmm. before they got the cathedral. And Brother Hagin was having a meeting over there that night. You and I went. <laughs> and we had, we had gone, we had stepped out just as the meeting was being finished. We were out there in the foyer of the front of that little building. And this woman came out of there. She said, her eyes were big and she had this big smile on her face. She said, I have been healed for 2,000 years and I'm just now finding out about it. Glory to God. Praise God. Healing is not hard to get. Thank you, Lord. It's you just receive it. And you don't even have to be saved to get healed. You can get healed and get saved. Do you, you remember those of you that were here? Well, I'll, I'll just tell it momentarily for those that weren't here uh, Friday morning. We were in Lima, Peru, and we were in a, in a basketball arena two blocks from the hospital. And I'd been preaching right down these same lines, and, and, and we have just had healing service and glory to God, all kinds of wonderful things happening. In this building, seated about 6,000. 
A woman diagnosed with malignant uh, tumors in her neck. She's over there in that hospital. <laughs> the glory of God came on her in her doctor's office. She said, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'm burning. Well, she, she didn't know what it was, but and she frightened her doctor. For he don't know what's the matter with her. She's on fire. I'm burning, she said. I'm burning. Praise God. And they examined her and the tumors were gone. They dismissed her later that afternoon from the hospital. Well, she knew it had to be God, but she, she had never accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior. But she walked out of the hospital and there two blocks away was that large billboard there announcing the meeting. And so she just walked from the hospital right over into the meeting, came in there and got born again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Darling, this is your morning. Hallelujah. The glory is here. You, you getting anything more? Yeah, one little thing. Here. Okay. This happened, actually happened. How many of you ever heard of Justice Duplessy? And his brother was David Duplessy. They you, were both you, well you known. Read that earlier. Did I read this yeah. already? Yeah. How he had to, he didn't believe in using the doctors? I'm going to read it again. Okay. Justice <laughs> Duplessy's father didn't believe in using the doctors. His wife wanted him to call on once, so there'd be no autopsy. The doctor went ahead and gave him his death certificate. Great. The church gathered round and prayed. He was at death's door. He broke into a sweat and rose up healed. He took a shower, milked the cows, and walked to the doctor's office to take back the death certificate. Now that's something. Isn't it? Now, now this man, we. <laughs> This man came to the United States, became a very, very close friend of ours, became a, a member of EMIC, and spent his retirement years and the closing years of his life there with us. I'm telling you, you talk about a man of faith. That is because he believed that healing belonged to him. Yeah. That the devil couldn't kill him. How old was he, George, when he, when he went home and be with the Lord? you remember? 85, 87, 88, something like that. Now, had there been a revelation of 120 years, he's the kind of man that would yeah, go on. But see, people, people actually believe that, that uh, um, the, God's lifespan was, was uh, 70. 70 or 8. No way. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm not through quit. yet. Are you? I ain't got time to quit. <laughs> Hey. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Give you the praise. Good in the my hand. This is she. She boy. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Ah, yeah, boy. Yes, my mom. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes sir. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do that. Glory to God. How many? Hang on just a minute till I. How many in here? you're either approaching 70 or you're over 70. Are you going to be glad you heard this? <laughs> Amen. Go ahead and sit down. I'm going to read this to you. Mm -hmm. 
Barzillai, this is the 31st verse of the 19th chapter of 2 Samuel. Barzillai, the Gileadite, Gileadite, came down at, from Rosalem and went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over the Jordan. Barzillai was a very wealthy man. And David was in exile with all of his all of his men and all of their families. There's a, there's a lot of people here. And Barzillai took care of all of them, fed them, took care of them, took care of, of, uh, of David. And then when he came out of exile, going to Jerusalem, listen to what happened. Barzillai I was a very aged man, verse 32, even four score years old. He's 80 years old. But now listen to this. And he provided the king of sustenance while he lay at Mehanaim, for he was a very great man. The king said to Barzillai, remember what we talked about, the prophet's reward? Yes. All right, now listen. The king said to Barzillai, come thou over with me and I will feed you with me in Jerusalem. Remember now, David's not only king, he is a prophet and a psalmist, which is part of the prophet's ministry. I will feed you with me in Jerusalem. Barzillai said unto the king, How long have I to live that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem? I am this day, so this was his birthday, I am this day fourscore years old. Today I'm 80. Can I discern between good and evil? He's having problems with his thinking. Can your servant taste what I eat or what I drink? He, he's having problems tasting, eating, and drinking. Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? He's losing his hearing. And maybe had lost most of it. Wherefore then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my Lord the King? Thy servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king, and why should the king recompense it me with such a reward? Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again, that I may die in my own city and be buried by the grave of my father and my mother. Now David needed this man. Had he followed David, See, David didn't just make this off the cuff here. I mean, the Spirit of God is leading the man. This, the, the, and he had blessed them. The prophet's reward was at hand. What if Barzillai had said, all right, I can't think, I can't taste, I can't hear, <laughs> but I'm going with you. God help me, I'm going with you. What would have happened? God would have healed him. The prophet's reward would have come to pass just like the Shunammite woman couldn't have any children. But she did because of the prophet's reward. Are, are you listening to what, what I'm telling you? <clears throat> I was reading that and I was sitting out on my deck out behind the house, I, I don't like to study indoors. I, I don't know. I'm, Gloria said the older I get, the more Indian I get. But anyway, <laughs> I, I'm outside there and I'm doing my studying. And, and I came across this. This, this hadn't been but just, just a short time ago. And I said, glory to God, Lord, look at this. <clears throat> and the word of the Lord came to me. I, I mean, it was so strong that I, I, I stood to attention. 
And he said, Kenneth, you have a choice. Now, several years ago, we stood on, on Genesis 6, 3. But he said, you have a choice. You've done well. And so forth and so on. And talked to him and bless me there for a little bit. He said, if, if you want to, if you desire to, he said, you've always known because I revealed it to you back in January of 1983, you've always known that you were going to live to be 92. I said, yes, sir. Well, he said, if, if you want to take the pressure off, he said, I, I, and, and, and just um, take it e easy for a while, he said, I'll bless you. And he said, you can go to 92 or, or better. Or you can go to Jerusalem with me. Well, that's where he's headed is Jerusalem. Amen. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. I said, no, sir. I got to attention again. I said, no, sir. Bless God, I'm not. I'm the, hey, I'm going to Jerusalem with the king. Hallelujah. You just have to heal me. You just have to heal Gloria. You just have to build us up and make us strong. Praise God, because I'm going to go. You tarry your coming. I'm going to be preaching on my 120th birthday, and we're going to go up to give. I've declared it by faith. I've seen it in the spirit. Glory is going to be sitting there right in front of me. Hallelujah. Five years younger. <laughs> I am going to be preaching when I depart this earth. I'm not going to be in a bed somewhere. I'm not going to be in a hospital somewhere. I'm going to be standing behind a holy desk somewhere in this earth. Hallelujah. And I'm going to hear the word of the Lord and I'm going to say, Gloria, come on, girl, it's time. She's going to walk up there with me and we're going to say, ha, 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 out of here. <laughs> God never intended for you and me to leave it up to him. No. No. The apostle Paul said, I am betwixt two, whether to go or whether to stay. But I have decided to stay. Now, why didn't he stay for 120 years? He finished his course. And all the things that he had been through, God, see, he had to prove the New Testament in action against everything the devil could throw at him. Praise God. Amen. But you and I are in this time span here where it's in very important Gloria's talking about the 91st song with long life. I'm sitting over there like I was this morning. And the Lord said, were you as anointed when you were 40 as you were when you were 50? I said, of course not. He said, it's the same anointing, wasn't it? I said, yes, sir. But you grew in that anointing. I said, yes, sir. He said, were you as anointed when you were 50 as you were when you were 70? I said, no. Well, he said, I have anointings that I need in the earth 
that can only come between 85, 95, and 100. He said, I have people that are living long, but not many of them anointed long. Now, our very, very close friend who is a strong prophet of God, Charles Green, and, and, and he turned uh, 90 last February. And I'm telling you, Charles is still going strong. Praise God. And I got to preaching on this 120. He said, hey, I'm going with you. Praise <laughs> God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. The choice is ours. Thank you. You choose life. Praise God. Ooh Praise Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Thank Come you. on up, George. Y'all can be seated. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, I have an assignment for you along this line. Just, uh, just, Terry and I... Just bring another chair for Gloria. Barry, please. Terry and I, you've heard Brother Copeland talking about listening to Brother Hagen. And we've picked up on that as well. We've listened to so much of Brother Hagen. We have been for many years, but we've really picked up on it. And there's one series that we've really locked into, and it's called Healing Belongs to Us. And we've been listening to that series over and over and over again. And so much so that there was one particular message on that that says, possessing what is ours. Mm -hmm. I've outlined it. I went through it and outlined it and looked at it. And I believe that there's a homework assignment in this that the Lord wants to give to you. We prayed. We believe God together. And there's one, one section here that Brother Hagen talks about this. He says, he says, uh, he was talking about Isaiah 53 and about a person who says, well, if that's so, then why don't I have it? Mm -hmm. And Brother Hagen said, we must appropriate God's provision. It doesn't just fall on us because God provided it. He's provided the new birth and the remission of sins for every sinner in the world, but not everyone has appropriated this heavenly provision. If the world owns him, why don't they have him? Because they've never accepted the gift. And then he said this, in appropriating healing, our faith must be based on the Word. What does God's Word say? Well, we've heard what God's Word has said. Most want to believe they're healed when the symptoms disappear and all of the condition is cleared up. What if tomorrow some of the symptoms come back? A person would say, I thought I was healed, but I wasn't. And Brother Hagin said, appropriating faith is based upon what God said. Now then, as he was preaching along this, he said, started telling a story about a meeting that he had, one of the extended meetings that Brother Hagin would have, and this was 1952. And there was a woman that came to one of the meetings one night, and she had a malignant tumor. She talked about that malignant tumor, that growth that was on her face. He said it looked like an eggplant. It was a bluish, dark, mean-looking thing on the side of her face. And so she gave testimony about what the doctor said about it, and they said that it was inoperable, that if they touched it, that it, she, would, she would die. But if she just kept going with this, well, she would eventually die. There was basically no hope that they gave her about it. And Brother Hagen laid hands on it, cursed it, commanded it to depart from her, commanded it to leave her. He said, I laid my hands in her. I cursed the growth. I commanded it to wither up and dry up, cease being, and stop existing. And he said, he opened his eyes and it was still there. And he said, she was not in a position at that moment for her faith to fully accept it. He said, knowing you can school yourself into faith, I asked her if she would do what I told her to do. And she asked him the question. She said, is it easy? <laughs> and, and he went on talking about, about most people want it to be easy. But he said, yes. He says, this will be about the easiest thing that you've ever done. And he said, look at your watch and see what time it was. And they looked at their watch, and the time was 940. He said, what day is this? She said, it's Monday. 
He said, from this moment forward, do you believe you have received your healing? She answered, yes. He said, when you go home tonight and you get ready for bed, you say this, I received my healing at 940 tonight at Brother Hagen's meeting. He said, the last thing you do before you go to sleep, you say, praise God, I received the healing for that growth on my face at 940 tonight, June the 6th, 1952. Now, before I go on with the story, what date is it today? August the 6th, 2016. It was at 12, 1145. I was looking at my watch. I was recording your confession. And it was at 1145 today, August the 6th, 2016. 11.45, Saturday, August, August the 6th, 6th 2016. 2016. It was at 11.45, Saturday, August the 6th, 2016, in Anchorage, Alaska. What time was it? 11.45. What day was it? August the 6th. 2016, Saturday, August the 6th, 2016. I'm saying that over and over again because this is the assignment that the Lord is giving us. I took it today. I received it today. He said, if you wake up in the nighttime, the first thing that you say is, praise God, I received my healing for the growth on my face last night at 940. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Hagen said, faith must be released for it to work for you. When did you re release it? If you're still seeking healing, you haven't released it yet. If you're waiting for the manifestation to come, you haven't released it yet. The moment you release your faith is the moment you believed you received. Right. Say it before you get out of bed. Say it throughout the day. Make yourself think of it. If you yeah. think of it yeah. a thousand yeah. times a day... You say it a thousand times a day. And he'd say it again. 940, June the 6th. Monday, June the 6th, 1952. George, excuse Sir. me. Someone was healed of stomach ulcers just a few moments ago. And the pain Thank has you, stopped. Jesus. The pain has stopped. I'd like to know who that is. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Right there. Yes, praise, praise God. God. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise Thank God you, for Jesus. it. Amen. Now, now, when did, when did that happen? Yeah, not 12, 10, 1145. <laughs> Amen. That's right. That's, That's exactly it. right. Brother Hagen said, do this for 10 days. Now, he had those extended meetings back then, and the meeting was going on. They had a morning meeting on the 10th day. And Brother Hagen, then after that meeting, went back to the parsonage, was sitting and visiting with the pastor, and the phone rang. The pastor picked up the phone, and he could hear a woman's voice on the other end. He didn't know what she was saying, but he could hear it because she was speaking loudly enough. And the pastor was saying, hold on, hold on, sister, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, well, slow down, slow down. What, now, what are you saying to me? And it was that lady. And she said that morning, she was cleaning the floor on the bathroom and the growth fell off her face onto the floor. I mean, that really, Terry and I have listened to that story now over and over and over again. On the 10th day, that growth fell off of her face onto the floor and it, it had attachments to it. It had tentacles to it. And she looked into the mirror and there was a gaping hole in her face but that within just or a matter of moments, it was completely cleared over and it was like baby skin Hallelujah. on her face. Hallelujah. And she told the pastor, she said, I put it in a bottle of alcohol and I'm bringing it to church tonight to give testimony of what God did in my life. When did that happen? That happened to her at 9 40, Monday night, June the 6th, 19, 1952. We declared the Word of God in this place today, Saturday, at 1145, August the 6th, 
2016. If the devil tries to bring this up to you again, you just tell him, I received my healing at 1145, Saturday, August the 6th, in Anchorage, Alaska, in the name of Jesus. Now, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Hallelujah. I took it. I took it. There's some, uh, there's some things that I've received. I've taken it. This day, this day will live, I won't say an infamy, but it will live, it will live as a, as a monument. I believed I received when I prayed. I believed I received when I prayed. I took it. I received it. So right now, I am, the reason I read this to you, because I sense this so strongly coming here, that somewhere in this meeting, this would fit, and it fit right now. That this is a word from the Lord to you that you are to declare this Praise over yourself. God. Praise God. And it will, it will have not only an, a, an impact on that issue you're dealing with right now, but it will have an impact throughout the rest of your life. There's some other things Terry and I agreed on that we have set our faith and we, we logged the day the moment and the hour that we made that declaration. We believed, we believed that we received when we pray. Now, I'm going to lead them in this. Is there something you wanted to Thank say? I'll go ahead. Okay, put your hand over your heart right now. Say this after me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus bore my sickness and pain. I receive now the fullness of that payment, the fullness of my healing. I received it at 11.45, Saturday, August the 6th, 2016, according to Isaiah 53. According to the scriptures we've heard today, I receive it, I, re I believe it, I have it, and I am healed. I was healed 2,000 years ago. I took that healing today, 1145, Saturday. August the 6th, 2016, I received it at 1145, Saturday, August the 6th, 2016, I received it at 1145, Saturday, August the 6th, 2016, I received it. At 11.45, Saturday, Saturday, August the 6th, 2016, 2016. In, the in the mighty name of Jesus, I am healed. I am healed. Come on, give God praise for that. <laughs>